Good morning, Bird Brains, and welcome to Hey Bird, What's the Word, where we cover news and events happening in the motorcycle industry. I'm your host, Justin Bird, and if you'd like to stay up to date on all things two wheels, be sure to punch that subscribe button. On today, we're talking about Kawasaki's hydrogen-powered motorcycle. Let's get into it. When you think of Kawasaki's 228 horsepower supercharged H2, low emissions is probably the last thing that comes to mind. But the 988cc power plant is actually a prime suspect to be converted to hydrogen power, and that's exactly what Kawasaki intends to do. The Japanese manufacturer already has a few patents out for the prototype engine that debuted in 2021. But now we have a trademark for both the name and the logo. The name HYSE, which Google says is pronounced HYSE, so I'm going to stick with that, along with a two-wheeled water drop are now the face of the multi-year hydrogen project. But before I get into the specifics of the bike, it's important to know the major factors that go into hydrogen-powered machines. While hydrogen is about three times more energy dense than gasoline, even in its liquid form, it's far less dense physically. What this means is you'll need a much larger amount of hydrogen to produce the same amount of energy in a tank of gasoline, which is where those saddlebags come into play. While this bike might look like the hottest new sport tour, there's little to offer in terms of storage. Kawasaki intends to use these to store pre-filled hydrogen canisters. Much like the Scream Tanks and Monsters Inc., these canisters are almost identical to the ones created by Toyota to be used in their prototype community Woven City near Mount Fuji, Japan. Woven City is a test case for the city of the future, using these hydrogen canisters to power cars and trucks along with homes and businesses. Toyota, Subaru, and Mazda have all been working together on the development of hydrogen-fueled combustion engine tech, while Kawasaki and Yamaha have been more focused on the engine development side. The main reason the H2 platform is ideal is twofold, the supercharger and the newly added direct injection system. This allows more air to be shoved into the cylinder and introducing hydrogen after the inlet valves are closed, therefore maximizing the potential power output, which in theory could actually outperform the gasoline-powered version. The main benefit of this system would obviously be emissions. Whilst not completely clean, the burning of hydrogen produces almost nothing but water vapor. Kawasaki also seems to be placing a lot of eggs in this basket as they are one of the leaders of the large-scale hydrogen supply chain establishment initiative, where Kawasaki City will actually be the main import hub for Japan for hydrogen being exported from Australia. While I most definitely fit the stereotype of the overweight, middle-aged, white male Harley rider, my ideas of the future revolving around alternative energy sources is likely not what you'd expect. New tech like this excites the hell out of me. While I'm a big cheerleader for the EV movement, I'm also not blind to the dark sides of it. The scarcity of minerals, the lacking infrastructure, and the completely broken power grid that we have here in the US are all issues that still need to be addressed. And some of the same factors fall over into the hydrogen movement as well. For example, hydrogen would have to be cryogenically cooled down to negative 400 degrees Fahrenheit to remain in a liquid state to even come close to the same density as gasoline. But if the infrastructure existed, a refuel or recharge could be even faster than the trip to your local gas station. While I have no earthly idea what direction society, or more importantly, industry will choose, there's a good chance that your kids, your kids' kids, or even your kids' 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 kids will be looking back at bikes like the Heist, similar to how we look back at the steam-powered monstrosities that used to run the world prior to the takeover of the internal combustion engine. The truth of the matter is, time waits for no one. But humans, while definitely not without fault, thrive on innovation. I've been your host, Justin Bird, and that is the word. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.